You want to hear something interesting fresh baked? As I record this, the only days that are completely sold out at Disneyland for the first month for opening day, April 30th, and the following Saturday, May 1st. After what was one of the most torturous 24 hour periods that I can remember since I started covering Disneyland, where some fans spent, you know, 12 hours or more trying to get tickets for those first 60 days that Disneyland is open. But amazingly, you can still get tickets for Disneyland. You can still get good tickets for Disneyland. And in this episode of Fresh Bake, we're gonna talk about what's happening now with buying tickets for Disneyland and what that might mean, if anything. All that and more coming up next on Fresh Baked. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Fresh Bake. You know, it's been four days since they started selling tickets and I was expecting it to be bad, but I wasn't expecting it to be as confusing as it was. In, in terms of buying tickets for Disneyland. I was expecting a lot of demand, but I was not expecting there to be this many tickets available uh, after, after four days already uh, of ticket sales. Actually, let's take a look at the calendar. It is Sunday afternoon as we view this, and we'll start with April 30th. There you see Disneyland is sold out, but there are still tickets for DCA for opening day, uh, and then park hoppers are completely sold out. The next day, Saturday is completely sold out, uh, both single park tickets and park hoppers. And this should come as no surprise to anybody, those two days being completely sold out. But May is otherwise pretty much completely available, and that's for either park, Disneyland or DCA, so long as you're okay with buying a park hopper. All the weekends are sold out for single park visits to Disneyland, uh, but every day is still available for DCA. Now, if you go the park hopper route, uh, there are even more days available, even those where you can start at Disneyland. These Fridays, for example, are park hoppers where you can start at Disneyland, then hop to DCA at 1 p.m. But actually, you don't even have to. You can stay in Disneyland that whole day. You don't have to park hop. You just have to be okay with spending 209 for the park hopper rather than 154 for the ability to go to Disneyland on one of those Fridays. But if you want a Saturday or a Sunday at Disneyland, you can still get one. You just have to start at DCA and then hop over at 1 p.m. By the way, uh, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. is still a pretty good day at Disneyland, if you ask me. I can get a lot done in six hours. I can enjoy Disneyland a lot in six hours. And keep in mind that that 7 p.m. closing time is just for the first few weeks, according to the Disneyland website. If you go to the website, check it out. The parks will close at 9 p.m. starting Friday, May 14th. 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. is even better. That's eight hours at Disneyland. So I guess what I'm saying is that I'm a little bit shocked at this point in time that there are this many tickets available for Disneyland, this many different ways to get into Disneyland. I mean, I know it's still the first week of sales, not even a full week of sales yet, but I just, I thought with all that, you know, pent up demand and the limited capacity that I, I just wasn't expecting this many tickets to still be available at this point. Now, having said that, let's take a look at June. Let's see if that trend continues in June. Okay, that's a little bit more like it. You got three strikes on Saturdays, on those first three Saturdays, and another on Sunday, the 6th. Uh, DCA is sold out for a single park ticket for that first weekend that Avengers Campus is open. And again, that, surely that is to be expected. But you can still go on Friday to Avengers Campus with a park hopper starting at Disneyland or on Sunday with a park hopper where you can start at DCA and even spend the whole day there if you choose. And again, for, for Avengers Campus, this is another thing I was not expecting to be possible at after four days of ticket sales, I figured by after four days, I figured after the first day, maybe the first two, that any possible access to Disneyland, uh, the opening weekend, 30th and 1st, or Avengers Campus opening weekend would be completely sold out by this point. I did think that. But what if Avengers Campus isn't even your priority? Look at the rest of June. Wide open Monday through Friday for single park tickets and open even further uh, if you choose the park hopper option with weekend visits to Disneyland possible, with a park hopper and starting at 1 p.m. for those next two weekends. So what I guess what I'm seeing here is that the message that I'm getting is that all that demand that we were seeing, all that you know, anxiety and tension and <laughs> what was happening on Thursday were just those guests who were trying to go on the weekends or even opening weekend for Disneyland. And for what it's worth, if that wasn't your priority and you were trying to hold out, it's super easy to get a ticket now. There's no, you know, the queue is gone. There's no wait. You can log in, buy a ticket, make a reservation all in one single transaction. Super easy. No big deal whatsoever. It's super easy to buy a ticket right now. So obviously, yes, that is an unexpected development 
with regard to reservations. Here's another unexpected development that happened to me this weekend. I bought a season pass for Universal, went last Friday, had a great time. You've probably already seen our first video on that, and there's another one coming. Uh, I had a great time at, at Universal, but a situation came up that required me to call Universal Customer Service and try to work something out. And during that call, I asked the question, when will pass holders be able to make a reservation uh, after May 17th? If you look at their calendar right now, you can make a reservation for one of their bonus days, but only up to May 16th, and the calendar's all grayed out. And what the, what the customer service rep told me was that starting May 17th, reservations will not be required for universal annual pass holders. They will be required if you're buying a ticket. When you buy a single day ticket, you gotta pick a day and you go that day. But if you have an annual pass, you don't have to make a reservation. You just show up with your annual pass first come, first serve, which frankly is an incredible situation if you consider the fact that I doubt very much that they're limiting sales of single day tickets. I don't imagine that they're setting aside any reservations for APs. They're gonna sell as many single day tickets as possible. Therefore, theoretically, it's possible that they could sell out of tickets. They could reach their allowable capacity, 25% or whatever that number winds up being. They could reach that number just selling single day tickets, theoretically which would mean that if you showed up with your annual pass, you couldn't get in. I mean, am I, is my logic correct here? It feels like, I mean, maybe it's not possible. Maybe it's, maybe they have enough capacity for everybody. They're not planning on selling that many tickets, but it's at least possible. It's within the realm of, of things happening. Uh, and the fact that the, the customer service rep that I spoke with said, I would recommend you get there early. <laughs> if you, when you go on the 17th or that, you know, thereafter, get there early because things could sell out. That's not exactly an encouraging thing for her to say. I mention this because we had the same kind of conversation a while back about APs for Disneyland. The idea, the whole point of having an annual pass is being able to go whenever you want and knowing that you can get in, no restrictions. Now, having said all that, that's not actually the point I was trying to make. I just wanted to throw that out there. The point that I wanna make is regarding annual passes and Disneyland. I'm wondering, if this whole situation that I'm talking about in terms of there being so many days available still for Disneyland, I'm wondering if this has Disney concerned at all. Remember, we don't have any precedent for this. We don't have any precedent for a park without APs. When they opened up Walt Disney World, APs were still being sold and welcomed, uh, and they were, t they were using up their reservations, et cetera. This is a whole new situation. This is, I mean, we haven't seen this situation occur in a Disney park in decades. That is, you know, single or multi-day tickets only, no annual passes. That has been a very long time since that's been the case. And with that, I wonder if it's possible that Disney may be thinking that they overplayed their hand. Uh, they, expected more, they expected more sales, more demand for single-day tickets. Kind of like when, they, uh, when Iger said, hey, here's how we're going to open up Star Wars land. We're not going to do any press. We're just going to say it's open and let the people flood in. And then they didn't. And so naturally that leads me to think if, if filling in those extra days, filling in those unused days, which I'm sure is of interest to Disney, might they consider selling APs again, maybe sooner than we had thought. Everyone asks us on a regular basis, David, fresh baked, when do you think Disney's gonna start selling APs again? And my initial reaction has always been up until now, as soon as they're able to lift the restrictions on capacity, because that's the reason why they shut it down, because there was gonna be too many APs and they would flood the capacity, the limited capacity. Very valid thought, very valid plan. It most definitely, probably, likely would have happened. Now that could happen as soon as June. If they do, that's, June 15th is when the state is supposedly planning to lift the tier restrictions. And if you lift the tier restrictions, if there is no color-coded tier system, then there is no maximum capacity at a theme park. So that, that would be the soonest that that's possible. And if this situation continues, if there are days where Disney is not operating at max allowable capacity, be that 15% or 25%, if they're not selling all those tickets, I wonder how long they'll continue not having annual passes to fill in those empty days, those empty slots. This just might be the catalyst uh, to inspire them to reinstate the annual pass program, to, to come to some sort of decision on what they want it to look like, uh, possibly sooner than they were planning. Not to say that it will happen. Heck, it's only been a week. It's not even been a week since they started selling tickets. So it's very likely that, you know, it's, we've got 12 days to go still until April 30th. So they could, you might see a lot more uh, sold out days between now and then. We'll take a look at the calendar 
next week and see if you know how that's shaping up. If it's still a bunch of open days, if it's like a bunch of weekdays or that kind of thing. Uh, but the, the you know every day that goes by where that calendar stays like that has got to be a little bit worrisome for Disney because I'm sure they're, they're trying to maximize their revenue on this as much as possible, having you know considering they have to run at 25% capacity. But what was your uh, expectation, Fresh Baked? Was all that urgency that we felt on Thursday, was that just guest, just guest trying to get there for weekends, the first 60 days, the weekends, the opening weekend, and Avengers Campus? Was that all that was? Answer this question for me. Were you or are you on the fence about whether or not you're going to go back to Disneyland anytime soon? Did something happen? Has anything happened in the, la in the run up to Disneyland reopening that has caused you to change your mind to say, no, I don't want to go to Disneyland? Uh, is it the prices? Is it the lack of APs? Is it uh, you know, the availability of Universal and Knott's Berry Farm? Have there, has there been an inciting event for you that says, I would rather not go to Disneyland? I would like to hear those comments. Let us know in the comments below. And until next time, guys, be sure to follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked and on Twitter at Fresh Baked Desi. That's fresh with no E. And be sure to stick around and continue following Fresh Baked as we're going to be covering all of this, all the reopening at Disneyland, as well as anybody can do it. We are the leading authority on how to go to Disneyland and have a fun time doing it. You can count on Fresh Bake to be there for you every single day. Nobody does Disneyland like we do, you guys. Uh, so otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, do be safe out there. Be kind to one another. It's free. You never know how much your being kind to a stranger is going to make that person's day. Think about that when you're out there dealing with people. Uh, we love you guys very much, and we'll see you next time. Fresh Bake!